for the last uh, the uh, co last lecture we few two transparencies or two faults were not shown so first i will show them and then start the process of diffusion uh, as i said water is the major uh, reagent for us in the vlsi lab and we need a very highly pure water and i other day calculated the water resistivity is one of the quality marker which is around 18 mega ohm centimeter here is typical river osmosis system which is installed in a every vlsi fab lab which creates this diw which is called this deionized water deionized water diw what we do is we have a distiller in which water is first boiled and then the vapors are collected and then this water which is now after distillation the relatively really pure water is available is then added some chlorine compounds and they that's called chlorination and once it passes to chlorination much of the bacteria are actually killed here chlorine is a very strong oxidizing agent chlorination is a very strong process in which most of the bacteria are actually removed at least they are killed if they are not removed once this slightly better bio water is available we pass it through a pre filter which is a standard filter uh, it actually stops much of the high size particles uh, maybe around 0.5 micron and above this is called pre filter then there is a pump followed by a ro system this is my ro system now please remember many of you might not have done a course any time in chemistry or chemicals so seriously but we use that very often is called reverse osmosis why this word reverse osmosis is a process which says if you have a what concentrated solution and if you have a dilute solution on the other side of the membrane then according to because of the osmotic pressures on the membrane the water from lighter side actually go towards concentrated side to dilute it actually water moves from lighter concentration or pure water will go to the sol which is already concentrated to dilute it out that's the process of osmosis however what we really want the other way i want a water which is already concentrated and i want to get little lighter water or purer water so i pass through the membrane and since membrane will actually do the opposite process which is called osmosis we pump it from the other side and force reverse osmosis process all homes these days have this uh, uh, ro system so it is exactly is there uh, you have to clean this membrane every 3 months and uh, every one year you have to change as well so what happens this so called good bio water clean removed many particles much of this pre filter also have a carbon filter okay which is called charcoal activated charcoals and they actually absorb some other kinds of bio impurities as well once this water which is concentrated here with the impurities passes through membrane you get a lighter water which is purer without impurities this is why it say it's a reverse osmosis once you get a pure water out of this membrane then we actually pass through a resin a huge bunch of cylindrical tubes are there big ones through which water is pushed from below and comes from the top side and this whole container contains a resin and that resin has a property that it is cationic in nature which means it will remove sodium potassium many of these first order compounds um, elements will be actually removed as oh ions with oh ions once much of the naoh or koh or soluble such are removed they actually are absorbed in the resins and the still pure water without those elements actually come out of cationic resin this cationic resin water then is passed through anionic exchanger which is another resin and please remember the way it is always pushed is something like if this is your cylinder which contains resin 
the water is pushed from here and taken from here. So, the, when this water enters, it starts reacting with the resin and much of the hard impurities like metal impurities like copper, gold, strontium, calcium, magnesium, all of them are remo removed in this process and the water which comes out of anionic exchange and they are retained in the resin itself and the pure water comes up and then it is passed through a mixed bed column. The mixed bed column is actually a mixture of cationic and anionic exchanges 50-50. Okay. There are two mixed bed columns kept, one anionic first, cationic second, the second one is cationic first and you actually pass through both of them so that whatever traces of those other impurities would have left out of this exchange and this exchange can still be taken out in the sand or the uh, resin and much purer water is available out of this. Please remember since we are removing ions, other day I said we are looking for 18 mega ohm centimeter resistivity of a water which essentially means it is deprived of HOH ions itself and they form only H2. Okay. There are no ions possible because ions means conductivity will actually increase and therefore resistivity will decrease. So, we wish to see that purer water. So, the test step of course, there is a electrolyte cell which I have not shown which we keep actually water can pass through it and show how or actually it is normally displayed these days how much resistivity water you are getting. Now, further for anything bios things are still coming out or then we actually shine ultraviolet light and it kills most of the bacteria. Some companies have another filter here called dye earth, earth atomic filter which actually removes bio materials, some companies do not have. And after that filter we have a very fine filter 0.2 micron or lower size part filter which is a small membrane uh, this what is it called polypropylene films run over which are grills, grids on that. And most of this all particles of larger than 0.2 or even lower are actually removed in this final filter and the water which you receive then is deionized water highly pure no contaminant because please remember why we are worried about because water is going to be used after every step what I do and therefore it should not add any ions of its choice because at the end I am going to introduce very small amount of impurities of my choice. If the concentration is already changed by something else then I do not know what impurities I am adding because they will be actually sitting into many of substitution sites. So, worry is that water has to be highly pure. So, this is a typical RO system. Earlier we did not have RO, we have normal like Equiguards also or other companies have without RO systems. In this there is a additional feature because it purifies much more. Membranes are very, very strong concentration gradient changer. Okay. So, we use that. However, as I say membrane is a, uh, is a biomaterial and has to be always clean and therefore, you need much more cleaner water to clean the membrane. Okay. So, there is a difficulty in all this, okay. but anyway this is how the waters are actually cleaned up. In, in a lab there are many kinds of things which we have to work with. Uh, there are tubes which carries gases sometimes water line and uh, they are made of two materials either stainless steel or teflon. Teflon is a very famous polymer which uh, actually one always says nothing sticks. So, he is a Teflon person, Teflon face person, nothing sticks or you make na bolu, kuch asar nahi. That is the Teflon thing. It is a normally there are both colored and non colored Teflons are used, but the best Teflons are white colored, which means no other impurities other than Teflon itself. And therefore, Teflon tubes are normally white, not Teflon, uh, everything which we actually use in the lab are either Teflon or at best sometimes polypropylene ones or mostly the gases pass through stainless steel. Please remember stainless steel is also a different qualities 304, 306, 316. If you are really a hardcore engineer in a lab, you will have to know which tube to buy, 316 is very costly. 
it is it does not have chromium uh, inside but it has a chromium coating outside which is why it has become stainless and it does not affect much of the grease much of the other things and it is a highly pure steel okay. it has much less carbon content because we are not looking for hardness. So this 316 stainless steel tubes are used and of different sizes quarter inch, half inch, one inch, two inch depending on the flow you are looking for. Then we have equipments uh, which are used along with the in the process are quartzware. Everything has to be quartzware and uh, even including tweezers and many many things which we use there are either quartz material racks, tubs, everything are made of quartz or sometime teflon okay either of them no other uh, species are allowed in. Sometimes if the initial cleaning is to be done or removal of grease or something it can be done in normal polypropylene which is also highly pure. We use tweezers of course this word now is almost gone. Earlier we used to have a buffer size of 3 inch, maybe 4 inch. So a tweezer I could hold it because mass was not very high. With 12 inch wafers we need probably 200, 2 tweezers and even then you do not know it may break. Okay. So one nowadays we just replace it with a gongs they say and then you put it in the rack immediately or rack to rack transfer from one rack you put it to the other rack. But if you are using SS per se, I mean tweezers then they should be SS or Teflon. SS are not used with any acids because they will be attacked, okay. only water or some such material where we can use. Stainless steel, okay. highest quality stainless steel is 316. The chrome carbon combination is very good, okay. some other day metallurgy if you are look want to see what is SS. Chemicals. We use both kinds of organic and inorganic chemicals often in the cleaning process as well as during the other processes. For example, if you see organic, we use trichloroethylene, trichloroethane, acetone, benzene and all kinds of resist, photoresist, e-beam resist and uh, these are all organic materials. Then we also use inorganic acids and bases. For example, we use chloric, hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid hydrosulfuric acid, nitrate, nitric acid, ammonium hydroxide, H2O2, H3 orthophosphoric acid and ammonium fluoride. All these are inorganic uh, materials and they are used. One important thing which I wrote just below that, all these chemicals should be mass electronic grade. This is essentially minimum electronic grade material should have 6-9 purity that is 99.9999 purity percentage whereas the mass grade is not only it is better than normal electronic it is 89 purities plus it has some way no sodium inside mass is most affected by sodium I have shown you other day and therefore it does not have any alkaline this particularly sodium or potassium. So therefore these are called mass grade unfortunately in India no one makes mass grade chemicals. So if you go to our lab, everything looks to be imported, okay. that is the worst part in all this technology because there is no fab house here, big ones and therefore there is no cell here to make such things. So we all import. Of course, please uh, as I told you, the electronic import in 2025 may exceed oil export. So please oil import, so please think of it, any small amount you save today is at least 1 percent saving in 25. Gases, uh, we use all kinds of gases, oxygen, ozone, nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrochloric acid gas, TCA gas, N2O, NH3, argon, phosphine, arsine, diborane, xylene, silicon tetrachloride gas, of course you have to boil it and silicon trichlorosilane, monochlorosilane, dichlorosilane, fluorine, CF4 and sulfur fluoride, sulfur fluoride, S2F6. All these gases are required for some things, some of them are for cleaning, some for etching, some for reactions and some for putting better oxide growths. So all these gases are required and many, most of them are again as I say better than electronic grade. They should be very, very ultra, ultra high pure gases. Okay. 
some of them are very uh, poisonous, extremely poisonous. For example, phosphine, arsine, they are extremely poisonous, silicon tetrachloride, fumes are poisonous, CF4 is, freon is very poisonous. Do you know why, uh, uh, where does, where was this used earlier and now we stopped it? In air, air, air conditioners or fridges, we have changed this CF4 from there. Uh, we use STF6 sometimes or some other, we also remove dichlorosilanes from there, okay. they are very toxic ones. Also some of them are flammables, like silane is extremely flammable like hydrogen, it just at room temperature, under pressure it just blast. Okay. So you have to be worried about the tubing which you keep, the exhaust you keep, all these have to be taken care when you are working in the lab, when the cylinders are there where the gases are stored, no leak should occur there, there should be leak detectors, there should be scrubbers which immediately removes those gas into non-toxic material, converts them. All these are required when you actually enter this. So then why do I enter? It is not a problem, but that is the fun part, I make devices or I make circuits. As I say, so a clean room making is a tough job and uh, maintaining it is even worse because humans will be there and they will never care but the system does not believe that way so it spoils. So your device's yield was anyway 1 out of 100 it will be 0 out of 100. So that is where you should start looking for that your cleanliness has to be there. Okay, of course there is a fire extinguisher, there are gas extinguishers, there are uh, uh, some mask, everything is available when you are working with clean, uh, toxic and flammable gases. Now we start with the new, this was all about the last lecture, these two slides I could not finish yesterday. So I start with now the new topic which is diffusion. Okay. The diffusion process is the most important process in semiconductor device fabrication or IC fabrication. All semiconductor devices use multiple impurity regions for diode has two regions P and N, transistor bipolar is 3 P and P, MOS has substrate source drain plus thin oxide plus gate. So we can see there are different kinds of areas have different kinds of doping and different kinds of concentrations of impurities that is the major part like source drain are really heavily doped materials areas. So most of the time we start with a wafer which is from the crystal grown and we can add impurities directly when the crystal is grown. So at that time we can make substrate either P type or N type whichever way you, whichever impurities I add during crystal growth. So wafers are available P type, N type for given open concentration. So we call that as substrate. So wafer is we call substrate and as I say thickness can be as large as 1 millimeter or maybe more now with 16 inch wafers. And we will use only thick, uh, large, uh, better the technology we are going, smaller is the surface area we are using, okay, a smaller is surface depth we are using. In 5 micron processes, we at least have junction depth of around 1.5 to 2 microns. Now with 14 nanometer, the concentration layer of source and drain is even around 50 nanometers. So the everything is scaling uh, other way. So what is happening, the wafer is thickening but the volume which you are using of silicon is very thin, very small. So rest is only physical support, okay. As I say of course silicon is far better than other material which is very popular in uh, other areas called 3-5 compound materials, gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, indium arsenide and host of them. Said in gallium arsenide that if you see it may break, so how do I work, you know, that is the fun. So gallium arsenide is extremely fragile, the silicon is not that fragile as gallium arsenide, okay, but it is fragile. Uh, is that okay? So we want to control impurities, let us say we started with this, so during the crystal growth we are controlling one kind of impurities, but when I make a diode, I will introduce the other kind of impurities for given concentration to a certain depth and that will make my diode. Okay. That controllability is essentially what is most important in making any semiconductor device. So impurities in semiconductor, right now as I say if I do not say anything material is silicon for us, we are only looking for silicon ICs, 
So, unless said otherwise 3, 5, 2, 6, no other semiconductor will be th thought of in this process. Though gallium arsenide technology is maturing and it is a technology of future and as I said future never comes, in 50 years it has not come. Okay. However, Moore himself is suggesting that yeah it will come, so maybe it will come. Uh, during CZ crystal growth we add fixed amount of desired impurities in the milk. So, one method is this, the other is during float zone we can add a doped crystal and actually give a number of passes to give uniform doping from that doped crystal to the undoped crystal that is called zone leveling. So, we have shown in the float zone we can actually uniformly dope from a given standard silicon which is dope known value and you keep passing the float zone and it all impurities will get distributed along axis and therefore this in Epson, Epson it is using a zone leveling but it is uniform doping. What is the important in crystal growth? The doping is fixed or at least uniform. Okay, I will not say fixed. Okay. Of course, number can be decided by amount of impurities you add and amount of in case of zone leveling how many passes you give and what is the initial concentration in the crystal you start with. Okay. There is another process which we will look into is called epitaxial growth. Okay. Now this epitaxial word, epitaxial growth impurities get uniformly distributed during the growth process itself. Okay. It is more like uh, crystal growth but it is slightly different. Okay. Uh, solid state diffusion is the major source of impurity incorporation. How from a solid source like in the case of phosphorus it is phosphorus pentoxide P2O5, in case of arsen arsenic it is AS2O3 ars arsenic oxide, in case of boron it is B2O3 which is diborane. So we have solid sources which contains impurities and from solid into silicon solid we pass the impurities. Okay. So, therefore, this diffusion is called solid state diffusion. Okay. However, nothing can move unless heat temperature is increased, we will see how much it will be. This is the major way impurities are earlier used to be incorporated. Of late we do not, but this is, but there is some, we will have to learn this much more because even after any process I do, impurity motion is decided by process of diffusion. So, we will see that again. The most uh, important process of incorporating impurity these days is ion implantation and we will have a full 3-4 hours of talk on the implants. But these are the major, we at least have, have to go through 6 to 8 implants processes steps before we make an IC. Okay. So, I, implants is a major process of incorporation of impurities. Basically what we are doing is whichever impurity I want to introduce, I somehow get it purified form of that by some method and then by electromagnet, I only get that element getting into a particular tube because it will follow certain Lorentz law and it will bend only in one particular angle. So, I pick it out and I put a lot of electrostatic field on that so that it picks energy and this high energy ions of impurities actually go and bombard the silicon. Okay. So, this is wafer and the, this is beam it just bombards. So, if I want everywhere I just scan it like this. Okay. So, I actually push the impurities by force I am having a lot of kinetic energy and I am bombarding static silicon. So, they will hit the silicon atom and get in okay, by force robbery okay, just get in. However, you need huge energy 300 keV or something like that we will see in implants. However, these are the this is the major step in which we can incorporate impurities. There is a version of this which is more like a CVD which we call is called plasma implants. So, when I teach implantation though it is not part of implantation specifically, I will tell you what is the difference we did. The reason why we went to plasma was low temperature process compared to normal implants process. So, we will see we will do on plasma implants. Of course, there is energy, energetic ions is created, therefore, it is still plasma, uh, still uh, ions, but created out of plasma, therefore, it is plasma implants. We will see this when we come to that. 
the epitaxial growth is like a growth on a, any substrate, it can be silicon or any other substrate, it can be glass, quartzware or even gallium arsenide, any, any substrate, gallium nitride, any material you can put. And the top of this I will create silicon by vapor depositions okay. and during this vapor deposition I can make N or P. This is called epitaxial word essentially starts come from the growth as below. So, whatever crystalline part is below is replicated above ok. It is called epitaxy as it is grown ok. So, epitaxial is a process where we want a very thin silicon layer on a silicon dioxide itself. I do not want on silicon. Then I will have to deposit it on any other surface and that is called epitaxy. Okay, so, that process is slightly different from normal crystal growth this. So, the silicon is brought in the contact, it will heat it, it will sit there, all this process will be discussed in EP growths. Okay. Uh, however, more important issue than all that I said so far is to know how these impurity transport in crystalline silicon or material. This process of transport is known as diffusion. Any time temperature cycle to a silicon or any substrate or wafer which may have any other process done earlier, whenever it sees time temperature cycle, what does that mean? Wafer sees certain temperature for a given time is called time temperature cycle and if, it, if wafer sees any of this larger time, small temperature, larger temperature, smaller time, larger temperature, larger time, whatever it is then the impurities which are already inside will get energized and will start moving ok. These impurities will start moving. This process is called diffusion. Mm. We will see this, this is what whole next hour of whatever time we are will do. So, what is the definition we will say? Diffusion is the process by which atoms move in crystal lattice. The motion of impurity atom in a lattice takes place in series of random jumps. Now, this word is important because diffusion process is a random jump process or random walk as it is called. What is random walk? It is a statistical process, random word itself says it is statistical. So, a person is standing here or maybe our CR is standing here and uh, he has probability that let us say one axis he decides he can either come to my side or he can go the other side. So, there is a 50 percent chance this person may come this side, 50 percent chance he may go back side. Similarly, 50 percent chance he may go to left, 50 may be right, maybe any angle. So, there is a 50 percent probability across left or right, right or whichever it is. So, it is a random process. However, after long time this, he is not found there which means he has moved from his original position even in random jumps. So, the distance which it travels is essentially because of process of diffusion. The simplest example of diffusion given in many uh, elementary books is if you have a water, add a ink drop, on the top there is a bluish surface and suddenly it becomes blue all around. So, the ink uh, uh, atoms actually diffuse through to equalize that this word is most important. The diffusion wants to equalize. So, let us say I smoke which I do not and I hope none of you should. So, for example, if I start, so the smoke particles are largest concentration here where I start or incense like agarbatti, you just burn it. So, for a while only it is particles are around, but after some time everyone smells, okay. It means this have gone forth back and forth back and forth but at the end equalized everywhere. This is the process of diffusion. However, in case of silicon I do not want impurities to go everywhere I want in a particular direction and that is the game we are trying to play. How impurities get in where I want ok. If they go randomly it is called isotropic system they go everywhere then I am under not control. So, I want to see they actually channelized they come to where I want to a depth I want, number I want ok. This is something what we will do in the technique, how to control everything. But process wise it is a random walk system ok. Uh, so, as I said you how hence for control and specific impurity motion one must study 
some physics of the diffusion because we have to finally control. All my uh, life I have been preaching you all that uh, every subject has some influence on others. Why learn physics? Learn because if I had to do something at the end to control, then I cannot say I someone should have written a software directly. Yeah, these days many softwares are available. So, let us see, uh, please note that even silicon, the interesting part is very important in this, uh, not only the impurities, the silicon itself can move, okay, atoms during temperature cycles can move from one position to the other, it is called self diffusion. Okay. However, as I see this will be much smaller than impurity transport, but there is a self diffusion also possible. So, anything you heat cycle, you will see some kind of motion and that is essentially process of diffusion. Have you noted down anyone? Of course, these are given in every book, uh, not necessarily in the language, not necessarily in the order, but given in most books because this has nothing to do with any specific person. This is process. I may state in a one way, you may state in another way, but you have to state the same. At the end, okay. So please remember this most important part, this self diffusion. Because now I'm sooner I'll come to this. How much is self diffusion and how much impurities? Because in real life both can happen. So how much I will be tolerating the other ones, or will that add or will that obstruct? We'll see that. Okay. How do impurities influence electrical behavior in semiconductor devices and circuits? They are uh, essentially concentration decides the majority, how much types of majority carriers use, uh, P type or N type, that will decide the property. How much numbers carrier concentration you have is also going to decide the property of a semiconductor or circuit rather. Carrier concentration gradients decide how fast or how low distance they will go. Okay. Then carrier lifetime, how long they can survive, okay. that is called lifetime. Most devices are affected by this word lifetime, BJTs are maximally affected. The minority carrier lifetime in the base decides the gain of a transistor. So, lifetime is very crucial in most processes. So, in many technologies, if I am working for power rectifier industry or I am working for micro industry where they use what called P ion diode, I have to control the lifetime in the I region very strongly for a faster or slower whatever I want, I will have to control uh, the lifetime. So, this process is very important in deciding the property of a device and which is technologically has to be controlled actually. Then of course, there are internal electric fields, you are looking at charge, any charge is essentially affecting each other because this is there is a space charge and there will be always a poison equation sitting right there. So, there will be electric field and therefore, voltage drops. Okay. So, any charge system will always be associated with, this is essentially statement of Gauss's law. Okay. So, uh, one of the Maxwell's equation and please I do not know if any one of you appeared in, I do not take these days M tech or PhD interviews often, but once a while if I sit I ask such trivials, why should charge should give electric field? So, that is I am asking Maxwell equation. So, you also start thinking Maxwell equation is the crux of all electrical engineering. If you do not know four at least learn two okay, by heart and know about other two otherwise. Is that okay? Majority num type, concentration, gradient, lifetime and internal fields decide the device property. Okay. Impurities used in semiconductor devices show energy levels or level in semiconductor band gap. Uh, N type show energy level very close to the conduction band and uh, uh, P type sh uh, show energy level close to the balance band. If an impurity gives a level at the mid gap that is E g by 2, what are those called? Recombination centers, both hole and electron can come and recombine. These are called recombination. They are away from the edges, then we they call traps. Any impurity will give energy level in the band gap. 
if it is near conduction band it is n type near valence band p type this in the center recombination center and anywhere else it is essentially a electron or hole trap okay and that also is a very important way of controlling device property. Yesterday I said leakage current a mass transistor is essentially governed by Shockley Reed all recombination theory. Theory is not relevant, actually we see it. So theory is only because Shockley did it, everyone has to say Shockley did it. Okay. So he also should say. The another example of electrical behavior is shown here. This is a MOS transistor, N channel kind. Of course, this statement is always made as N channel MOSFETs are better than P channel. This is little false statement. In a CMOS, both are required. So, why do you say this is better or worse? And uh, P has its own advantage, N has its own advantage. But let us so because mobility of electrons is some numbers higher than the holes, we keep believing N MOS is the best device. Okay. But please do not go by that. A uh, crux statement in every book, everywhere they write. Okay. This is a Milman's thinking. This has to be like this. He was in 1800 time, so he still thinks it's in 2000 is correct. Uh, for example, we used to teach in 87, CMOS process is the low power process. In 2012, it is no low power process. It is as much consuming as that would have thought earlier. We did not think that time. So, all statements have to be modified as years come. Here is a oxide which is called fog. This is essentially what I am going to fabricate. Okay. So, all the process some way are shown here, not every one of them, many of them. So, this is a P substrate, N regions are created which are source and drain. There is a metal contact to source and drain. This cross ones are metals. Be just above this source drain area, uh, area, please take it area. This is two dimensional, but in actual device, transistors are three dimensional device W, L and thickness is third dimension. So, this thin oxide sitting here can be insulator of any other earlier it was SiO2 and even now many devices use SiO2, but now the new names lanthanum oxide, hafnium oxide, hafnium oxynitride, all tantalum oxide, titanium oxide, zirconium oxide all are trying to replace silicon dioxide. The top of this can be either metal or polysilicon and this if it is poly it has to be doped because met poly doped can be ha will have concentration around close to metal not anyway very close but close to metal. So, I want a metal like structure there. So, I use doped poly it is always covered by oxides these are called spacers we have problems there. So, if you see this, there are different materials here. N is why N plus doping is here source drain, P is doping in the substrate, then there is a poly doping, there is a metal here which make a contact with silicon. Please metal into semiconductor is called short key contact, that is say rectifying contact. It can be made ohmic by doping heavily below, but it is still rectifying. Rectifying contact, uh, what is the difference between ohmic and rectifying? What is the difference? The resistance in the other case is 0 okay, in a ohmic in rectifying there will be finite resistance of the contact it is called contact resistance. So, you can see there is a contact resistance due to this metal to semi then there is a semiconductor sitting here source and drain they themselves will have source drain resistances. Then there will be a channel the some part will be depleted out in the below. So, there will be some contact here as well there is a junction resistance here there is a junction here below is the depletion layer. So, there is a pure channel resistance some external additional resistance extra resistances on the edges and there is a, as I say poly is not as good as metal. So, it has some resistivity and therefore, it will have some resistance. So, it is called gate resistance. Okay. Many people believe that gate resistance does not play a huge role because there is a oxide setting no DC current pass but the AC we are passing step, stepping RC time constant is there that means the input clock will never go with the same frequency if R is larger it will get attenuated right there. Okay. So, please remember gate thick, gate resistance many people do not even think it, but as I increase frequencies I did realize 
that that time constant is also very relevant. So in 2000 onwards we are going back from polysilicon gate to metal gates. So then question another 70s maybe metal gate tha tab kyo nahi is abhi continue kyo nahi kya will come to this technology. Of course we are not using same metal there we use aluminum earlier now using molybdenum, titanium, tungsten many other materials and their silicides as word goes. Okay, so the, that means there are parasitics which are RS, RD, R external, RSC, RDC and they will adjust. Let us look at current going from source to drain, simple one calculation. If there is a very small R here, okay, or sigma is very large, the current is essentially called drift current, field added current. So, J is sigma E. If sigma is large, current is large at smaller E. Okay, sigma is large. If there is a resistance there, I will have a drop on this parasitics. So, the I may apply VD, but actual VDS may not be exactly what VDD I apply because there will be a drop in the this parasitic. Essentially means I require additional current to come either by increasing power supply voltage or by increasing the size of the transistor because otherwise the speed will go down because your R is getting current will reduce which is called ID sat current. The current of a transistor is defined in ID sat that current drive current will go down because of simply drops in the parasitics. Resistance we shall see soon is a function of rho L by A. So, some way if you are thinning something your resistance will increase in a newer technologies. We thought it will be decreasing actually it will increase. So, more worries started when you scale down the new technologies, new technologies. 14 nanometers are worst problem. So, we are now saying why do we will make short key content metal metal no no in between ok. There are issues with that we will see that technology later. If you scale down the technologies from say 1 micron 90 nanometer 45, 65, 45, 32 this is the channel start reducing and it gives lot many effects. Professor Vasi is the best person to explain them short channel effects. It deteriorates the performance of uh, transistor. If I would have been teaching that course, I would have taught this but let since he is the best person around. So, you learn from him this is very important worry for all designers short channel effects and of course they are decided by doping size so around source and drain the fields you create therefore they are very crucial. Leakage currents as I just said use are the substrate doping decides the leakage current uh, so is the because of the junction formed. So all this you can say technology is some way controlling the circuit performance or device performance. Larger current means higher speeds, okay. but larger current means higher power, so keep matching, How, what, what do you want? Okay. So our worry, uh, what is our ideal thinking? We must make a chip or a device which has zero power consumption, infinite speed and zero area. That is the ultimate, but that is only zero. So, <laughs> So please do not believe it will happen but that is that that is our ultimate we are looking for. Typically the things which I will use in my theory uh, my measurements as well as theories the resistance of any bar of a semiconductor N or P is given by rho L by A, L is the length, T is the thickness, W is the width. So if I replace it uh, L uh, A by W into T. Then, then I can rewrite it is rho by T into L by W. One can see from here rho by T if rho is constant, when rho will be constant? When the doping is constant, rho will be constant. But if the doping is varying, rho will also be a function of x or y or z whatever. I, okay. So rho by T if it is constant and even if rho is a function of x or y, that term is called sheet resistivity or sheet resistance RS. So, we define R as RS into L by W. Now, you can see this L by W is also called aspect ratio. If you see this semiconductor bar and if you say L by W is equal is smaller than L, so you have 
say three parts, this is also one W, W W. So one can see one cube of L, L and W same, so one cube, two cube, three cube. L by W is three, three cubes, okay. Or length is three times the width, so it is L by W is three. So it is called aspect ratio. So if I want to increase or decrease resistance, one of the method is adjust sheet resistance or adjust aspect ratio. Okay. This has in a design, this is important. How much resistance you want? You must decide whether I should use aspect ratio as if the dopings are fixed, which you cannot modify, then the only way R can be varied is by different L by Ws. If you are allowed to vary uh, dopings, different regions, what is the problem if I dope different regions differently? So many masks will be every small process I will have to mass rest of this and dope only that part. So mass numbers will increase, but they will be more accurate, I can control rho much better. And therefore, resistance in a circuit is normally avoided in most circuits because this R control is very difficult. Larger the R means, larger the aspect ratio. Who will put, if one chip contains only one resistance, what do I put on? Therefore, bipolar technology lost race many times simply because without R, it cannot work easily or very better way. And R's are the, there is the emitter resistance, the collector resistance, everywhere resistance resistance. Now, I cannot put too many RC such things in a, on a chip, instead I put mass transistor itself everywhere, okay. So, I, I have better way of doing. However, as I say bipolar still could be faster, could be. Moss are getting on, okay. So, please remember R, this RS word is very crucial called sheet resistance. We will actually monitor in a lab whenever I do diffusion, the first thing I monitor is the sheet resistance, how much sheet resistance I got, okay. And that gives me an idea how much doping I have done, okay. So, this is my major parameter which I control or which I monitor actually. Extending same thing, uh, we know conductivity is q mu n plus q mu p p. If it is n type, then it is n is larger than p. So, we can uh, either q mu n or q mu p or if it is p type. The current from say x direction where the voltages are applied, for example, let us say this is x direction along L, then the electric field is voltage uh, divided by the length, applied voltage divided by the length is the electric field along the x direction and the current and sigma is given by the carrier concentrations you have. So, J into sigma E is the current which is called drift current density. If you want current multiplied by area, so you get current density J I by A is J. So, I is A times sigma E. In the dope resistance, if I have a junction, maybe I will show you here. This is let us say P and N. So, the impurities have only gone to a distance and where junction is formed between P and N. This de depth up to where from where the, where the junction lies is called junction depth, okay. That means impurities from the surface are introduced and they go up to Xj and the material is N type only till then. Below this there is a P type and what happens at the junction how many impurities? Zero because they must that is why junction is made. They are compensating each other. Okay. This is what essentially I say Rs is rho by Xj in case of diffuse regions. And rho of course is 1 upon q mu n n q mu p p is a specific resistivity. So, rho is by T instead x j is in real diffuse regions it is instead of T we write x j. Okay. Let us say if n is not uniform in the dopings, normally the diffusion process does not give uniform doping, only crystal growth E p growth gives it, but diffusion process is gradient based. Please. Diffusion processes are gradient based, so the concentration is not uniform everywhere. So, they give some profile Nx downside and uh, surface concentration is the maximum and impurities start diffusing down due to the gradient and somewhere down where this impurity concentration same as p type, it will form a 
junction. Okay, we'll show you the, this is what all that process will work into. So if I use this as my junction depth, I can then write sigma average sigma that is called universal uh, averaging. What is averaging? Sum of all terms divided by the distance you take or integral of that. So sigma is 1 upon xj, 0 to xj q nx minus nb, nb is the base concentration because these impurities minus these impurities are only available in this. So nx minus nb into mu nx, mu n also is a function of x because mobilities are also a function of the dopings, larger the doping mobilities are smaller. Okay. So if you really want this needs to be solved uh, numerically not easy to solve analytically. However, we define Rs as rho by xj or 1 upon sigma xj. So this 1 upon this integral is essentially sheet resistance. So I, I will tell you later, I can if I monitor number of Rs at different points in xj, then I can find Rs uh, nx actually. That is how the profiling is done. I repeat. If I RS1, I find NX1, RS2, I etch out something, measure again, then this, the next point, next point, next point. So actually I can plot N versus X as I keep etching and measuring RS values. That is the one process we will see later. Okay. Otherwise you can do second ion spectroscopy and can seem as the word goes, we can always get a profile. But even there we etch, all that we do is etch. Okay, so basically any diffuse profile, the monitoring is only by sheet resistance. This is the whole crux of all that was that whether it is uniformly doped or radiant doped, this will always be, RS can be always monitored okay, at the surface. So at x is equal to 0 at the surface, we know the concentration which we start with, which is essentially called the word we shall use later is called solid solubility. What is the word solid solubility? We are always talked of solutions. The maximum number of atoms which can introduce into other material without dislocating it or di without disturbing its lattice structure is called solid solubility okay. at a given temperature. Solubility is a function of temperature largest number of like in silicon we have 5 into 10 to the power 22 atoms per cc is the concentration of pure silicon. So obviously no impurity can be 5 into 10 to the power 22 per cc. Why? If they replace all of them then there is no silicon. Okay. So obviously silicon concentration will be higher than impurities. So the best of doping can be done with arsenic which is around 4 into 10 to the power 21 per cc, one order less. 10 atoms of silicon, 1 arsenic. Okay. That itself will put some value of sheet resistance because larger the, so even larger if I reduce the resistance. So I want to see how much higher I can go. Okay. Is that RS clear? RS can figure out even in the doped regions as well as universe, uniform ones. So it is not that only uni, uniform doping I should, I can have profiling and I can find what is the way impurity is getting in. Uh, impurities can contribute to resistivity only and only if they occupy substitutional sites. If they are on interstitial sites, they do not bond itself to any silicon. Okay. The, okay. Here is an example. This is a silicon lattice. These are atoms and there is a vacancy here. Okay. There is a vacancy here, no atom. And as I already discussed with you, vacancies are naturally created because of the crystal growth when we do. Okay. Some atoms just do not go there where they should. Okay. But when we say it is a defect, we think it is a defect, but if it is not there, there is no doping. Okay. So it is good that there are defects. These are also first found by Schottky and therefore they were given name Schottky defect. Now if you have a vacancy, it can be also created by something. You have a lattice, good lattice and during this crystal growth freezing because of energy released, one atom may leave this space and can sit other places, okay, may go to interstitial also. But then creating a 
vacancy there. If this atom moves from here to here, it will create a vacancy. So, vacancies can move, is that word clear? Atoms jump, self diffusion, atoms jump create vacancies. From here something else will come, vacancy will move somewhere else. So, we say vacancy also can move, okay. this is important. This is the other diffusion uh, we can see. If silicon, any impurity atom sits between this lattice points, not bonded to anything. Please remember silicon is essentially tetravalent bonded. So, every silicon is sub, has one silicon on all sides. This is how silicon lattice works, okay, four, four sides. Each similarly for this four, four, four. But there is a place in between and those in this essentially is called primitive lattice. Three this is called primitive lattice, not a unit cell, this is called a primitive lattice. So, I, I figured out if I take a surface picture of this primitive lattice, these are four atoms, there is a void in between which is actually larger, do you think so? Even if water is their size, this space, diagonal space is larger and because of that voids are very easy to be available for us. So, actually impurities will like to go where? To the voids first because they are, they have enough number everywhere available and they will try to go there, okay. So, interstitial diffusion as such looks to be much more dominant, but if all atoms impurities sit into interstitial site, they do not get bonded to silicon atom and therefore, no change in resistivity, at best they may give defects, okay. So, but it can also form something else as I just now talked about this, a vacancy you know from here an atom can move from a good lattice to an interstitial site and create a vacancy. Some other this will come here occupy this, so this pair itself will move ahead, okay. So, we say Frankel pair, interstitial substitutional pair is called Frankel pair, unlikely event but can occur, together jumping is unlikely event but can occur, okay. So, there are three major defects which we see in crystal vacancies, interstitials and Frankel, okay, oh, sorry interstitial and Frankel. So, the diffusion can happen to either at vacancy sites, this or vacancy this pair itself can move, we will see this is also important actually. Is that okay? So, this is something how impurities diffuse inside a silicon crystal, okay. Please remember the point defect density is a function of substrate concentration, number of atoms of silicon for example per cc. The activation is because if they are to move they need some energy, so it is called activation energy. And of course, at a given temperature only that much additional energy, it is a thermodynamic process. So, thermal part will actually enhance the kinetic energy. So, let us calculate at least this, how much, how many defects per cc we create. If Ns is the number of defects per cc created in a crystal of concentration and atoms per cc. If Ns is the number of defects per cc created in a crystal of concentration and atoms per cc. By thermodynamic principle, the defect density due to availability of them in n atoms at a given temperature can be given mathematically. This is a possible combination, permutation and combination two words, say one out of so much can go, okay. So, ns is the defect, n is the number, of how many ways actually they can have possible moving there can be given by C n n s which can be given by n factorial n s factorial n minus this is I suppose you know this much maths anyway. However, thermodynamic system say the entropy of this system can be written as k, k is Boltzmann's constant 1.23 10 to power minus 23 joule per second, okay. Please remember number, of course I will give you data wherever I need, do not have to remember. 30 odd year, 40 odd years, I am doing so much of that, I remember all numbers, but you need not, you will give you the data. Data is from our side, all that I am asking is this and hand work. So, S is K L n, this probability C n s to n, 
this is how it is defined. Then I I multiply both side T. So T dot S is K T L N N by upon N S this. The binding energy of atom which is also called enthalpy H as it is called can be written as activation energy into multiplied by this is per unit volume into numbers. So how many defects? This is for creation this what is E S? is the energy required to create a defect. If the NS defect the enthalpy total enthalpy is ES times NS. If defects are to be created there is a thermodynamics law which says maybe I should say somewhere below G is equal to or maybe delta G but right now I may say G is enthalpy minus T S where S is the entropy, T is the temperature, H is the enthalpy. If H is larger than T S gives energy is positive. If H is smaller than T S the gives energy is negative. In any reaction A plus B equal to C plus D, if forward reaction is to be held G should be positive, if reverse reaction is to be there C plus D is coming back to A plus B minus G should dissociation and formation. This process both thermodynamics says life is not simple, it forms this forms, keep cutting all the time and the equilibrium something is available to you. Okay. So if I write G then G is N S E S minus T S, okay, I have earlier I had written sorry. Then I substitute T S from here and H from here. So G is N S dot E S minus K T bracketed L N N bar N factorial factorial. These are this some people write this, I am writing this factorial. Okay. Is that okay? I just put this T S here and H here. So H minus T S is G. So G is N S E S minus K T L N N factorial minus L N N minus N factorial minus L N. This is log. So L N A minus L N B. So this is the function. Is that okay? We must first evaluate the Gibbs energy which is H minus T S. In fact the way it is it is written delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S is the change in from the room temperature. But I right now did not want to take you too much in thermodynamics so I directly wrote. Okay. Is to create a defect how much energy is required? There is a for any process there is a activation energy. So to create one interstitial defect or a vacancy defect you need an E S energy. If there are n such atoms defects to be created, I need n times E S the net energy. Okay. Each ke liye yes, n ke liye e. because you are asking is why should you multiply it? The multiplied part is something. Each defect will require that much energy. It is sum of E S plus 2 S. This is n E S. Each atom will require that much energy. Same energy cannot be used. That is will spend that much energy from the thermal area. So each will require E S energy to create one defect, N S will require N times E S defects energy for total A N S defects. Okay. okay, if I write uh, expand this, uh, we have a maths formula which is well known L N X factorial is X L N X minus X. This is a very important maths formula given in every book, maths book, tables. Google go anywhere and the books of this silicon VLS as well. This is a formula ln x factorial is x ln x minus x. This is known maths. Okay. So I use this to remove this factorials, solve this, see terms which are going. For example, this n and my minus n plus n will go, n s, n s will go, something some I have done this this n this n will go this n s this n s will go. So I get this as my g okay. You can write down I am just saying. The thermodynamic principle says the maximum defects can occur when dg by dns is or g is minimum all thermodynamic system wants to go to the minimum energy state. 
So, g has to be d g by d s has to be minimum. If that happens, I differentiate this, equate it to 0 and I remove the term whichever can go. n factorial n log n minus n okay n log n minus n minus n minus n s ln n minus n s plus n minus n s minus n l n s ln n s plus n s okay. So, if I differentiate this and then equate it to 0 I get E s minus k t ln n minus n s minus ln n s okay. The other terms this is minus 1 this is plus 1 so that goes away only these two terms remained. So, these are the two terms. What is that I am trying to do so far? What is this relation is going to look at you? I want to find n s as a function of E s and t. I want to know now how many defects I, I can create at a given temperature. That is the relation I am trying. I could have written day 1, this is how it. But I just told you how do we really do in thermodynamics? This is the way I do it. This is the way books do not want to do it. I just want to show you how interesting it is to see how it actually happened. Okay, okay. maybe some for them, someone may be, I am wasting my time and theirs, maybe more theirs than mine. See, since I do not have this solution from anywhere, or maybe it is there, I do not see, I solve myself. So, I have to write all steps. You can write this and maybe this. For me to know what is this last step, I will have to do. The, substitution, sub cutting, putting the equal to 0 and then see which term goes. I get this expression after some maths. You need not do it. You can assume that this is done. Okay. But to prove tomorrow if I would have written directly this is equal to 0, you would have asked me how come it has. So, I just thought okay, this is how it comes. Okay. Of course, these are available in many old books. Okay, so, if I reorganize E s by k t is ln n minus n s, I assume that the number of silicon atoms or atoms in which these defects are going to be are larger than the defects I am creating. If I have more defect than as I say they will not be silicon at all. So, I assume n is larger than n s. So, I if I expand this n by n s minus 1, I neglect 1 because n by n s is larger than 1. So, it is close to n by n s. So, I write n s is n e to the power minus e s by k t. So, a defect is one can see from this expression available atoms n. In silicon it is 5 into 10 to the power 22 for example. E s is the activation energy of vacancy or substitution I mean interstitial or Frankel whatever is ES required to do that. So, one can see what is the crux of all this? NS will be larger if temperature is larger. E to the power minus 0 is 0 and therefore, sorry, E to is 1 and therefore, N all of them are as if replaced. So, at T is equal to infinity, this is E to the power 0 which is 1. So, at very large temperature silicon will be replaced by impurities which is what we do not. So, we do not go to the that much temperature. Okay. So, obviously larger the temperature incorporation will be larger vacancies or interstitial will be available at least impurity uh, interstitial uh, vacancies will be larger. Larger the vacancy what does that mean? I can replace with so many impurity atoms. So, I can dope. So, is that now clear why high temperature process required because I need atom space to replace. So, I must create okay. that is how I decide I learn oh thermodynamically it must be happening. Okay. Clearly N s increases with increase of temperature since crystal growths are at very high temperatures there is a very large probability of creation of vacancies and interstitials and because of that there is an impurity incorporation possible. So, one question always asked that how can how do you know it? they will get in so much. So, at a given temperature only those many num amount of impurities can be introduced. So, is that fact clear to you? So, why you have to increase temperatures? Because if I want higher doping, I must push 
higher temperature, lower the temperature, lower will be doping. But I do not want that, I want lower temperature and all control. So I search for non diffusive, uh, non solicited diffusion process where temperatures are not necessarily thermal temperatures. Thermal temperature is how much energy? Kt is the energy associated. So I, I say, okay, I will give you Kt energy in some other form. Why, why do you want only from heating? Which is the method? Plasmas. Okay. So I can create plasmas which have as much energy, okay, which is equivalently high electron temperature, but not system temperature. System may be 200 degree, okay, but the electron, the ion will have high energy, and therefore higher temperature. I use the same mass latter and say, okay, all that you wanted, I did it at low temperature. Okay. So there are processes which are trying to use this theory anyway because this is the only theory how impurities can get inside. Okay, whichever way you are providing temperature is yours. Okay, this is last maybe few minutes. One last slide. A number. Dekha deta hu. In general, NS for interstitial sites is called Ni zero i to the power zero is different from Ns for vacancies which is Nv to the power 0. This 0 is intentionally put, it is starting vacancy concentration, starting interstitial concentrations and uh, there is something we will later learn. There is no just V0 but V minus, V minus, minus, V plus, V plus, plus. So some game is going to play it. So I right now put 0, some books write X. So the interstitial concentration to N silicon at that temperature e to the power si0 by kt nv0 or nv to the power 0 or neutral vacancies as they be called nsi e to the power sv0 by kt and if for a silicon if I substitute this n numbers and activation energies I get ni0 is 10 to the power 27 exponential minus 3.8 ev per kt nv0 is n into 10 to the power 23 exponential minus 2.6 ev by kt. So what, which number seems to be larger? So interstitial sites are always larger than vacancy sites. Okay. So is that clear to you? So for a given crystal or given concentration, silicon of course are used, but any other species, any other impurity, the defect and interstitials can be found if you know the activation energy for those impurities in that material and a given temperature, I can find number of defects both interstitial and vacancies. If I know the number, I know how many I can push in for given concentration value I am looking for. Someone wants into about 20. If we do process a 700, nothing will go there. Okay. So I must increase to 1100 so that those impurities can go there. So why process has to be have temperature strong dependence is decided by availability. Is that okay? Is that okay? Uh, because the activation energies are not same for both. They will not be same. This number is not very clear. This is a fit function as I call. Okay, I adjusted this number to suit some. Equal, otherwise this value would be smaller and this value will be correspondingly adjusted. So what I did is I readjusted to fit to a curve. Okay. So this is not mine, means many others have done it. So this is a fitting curve. Please remember most modeling people, what do they do? They only do this. See a curve and put A0 A plus A1x plus A2x square. Polynomial kisi bhi cheez mein fit hota hai. 100th order lagawe to all surface volume anything can be fitted. Randomness everything can be taken care. Large amount of program running you have to do it but it will fit finally. 8 lakh term mein to sab kuch fit ho jata hai. Okay. Shorter term mein fit karna hai to kuch tricks lagane padte hai. That is the way it is. Okay. okay. 